Hey guys, in this lesson, let's focus upon the circulatory system or the transportation in animals. So to start with, we know that in unicellular organisms, meaning the animals which are made up of a single cell, the transportation of substances, it occurs with the help of simple diffusion. So, the waste which is accumulated inside an animal, it gets out through the diffusion. The food material which is present outside an animal gets inside with the help of diffusion only. So, this is the simplest way of transportation of substances. Now, as the evolution takes place, we see that there are animals which are present in water. For example, like hydrilla and sponges. So, in organisms like hydrilla and sponges, the water helps in this transportation. So, the water, it moves through their body, it brings in the good or the digestive nutrients and while going out, it takes away the waste of the body. So, this was about the simpler organisms. But how about the organisms which are very complex, the higher organisms, like the higher animals, for example, like us. In animals or let's say in human beings, we have a need of a proper circulatory system because we are very, very complex. And as there is a need of this circulatory system, we do have one. So, the circulatory system of a human is like the railway network of a country. Wondering how? Well, like in the country, there is huge network of railway tracks. Similarly, in your body also, there is a huge network of blood vessels. In these blood vessels, the blood flows in a similar manner like train runs on the railway tracks. The train runs on the railway tracks to carry people, different substances, etc. Right? Similarly, the blood performs the same job. The blood has a main function to transport material from one part of the body to the other. Now, these substances can be different, different things. So now let's have a look at the main components of this circulatory system. When we talk about the main components, like I just said, the first component would be the blood, which is the main element performing most of the elementary functions. Second, the blood flows in the blood vessels. So these are tube-like structures that you can observe in your body. Okay, you can even see a few in your hand, like blue colored ones. They are also a type of blood vessels. Alright, next, a very important organ of your body, the pumping organ of your body, which is called as heart. So, these three are the main elements of the circulatory system. The blood, it is the elementary part. The blood vessels, they basically carry the blood. So, there are some animals in which there are no blood vessels. So, the entire body is filled with blood only. But in us, but in humans, we have a closed type of circulatory system. Meaning that blood only flows in the blood vessels. Now, to pump this blood to the entire body parts, we have heart. So, heart is the pumping organ which pushes this blood to the all parts of the body. So, this was about a brief introduction to the circulatory system of humans. Moving forward, we will have a look at the details of each of these elements.